I'm glad to see you all here today this afternoon and <clears throat> I have a question for everybody um, and sometimes I always think how other people mostly in the West people think about Buddhist teachings and this spiritual path why do we learn these teachings and why do we practice if somebody asks us why do you practice Buddhist teaching why do you meditate and why do you learn Buddhist teachings and what is the purpose of it if somebody asks us what would be our answer what should be the answer to <clears throat> and even how we should understand these teachings and this practicing what do you think about that yeah um to know reality and to know nibbana yeah to know the reality and to attain the nibbana nibbana means uh the cessation of suffering and when buddha <clears throat> became the buddha after that he when you know he were reflecting on his achievement and resting for seven weeks and after that he thought uh, about teaching <clears throat> about teaching this dharma to other people and it occurred to him that this dharma is very profound very subtle hard to understand people who are obsessed by general you know sense pleasures will have a really hard time with understanding this kind of profound and uh, deep dhamma deep reality so he was, his mind was like having this thoughts and uh, didn't um uh, get the enthusiasm or I didn't get uh, an idea to teach or spread the spread it what he understood and then one of Brahma saw that and appeared right before him he said Bhante it is a big disaster it is, it is a big disaster if we don't teach this Dhamma to your beings to beings there are beings who can understand there are people who can understand this dhamma on behalf of them with the compassion without of compassion of them please teach this dhamma to every being otherwise people will descend to more uh, suffering and will suffer from the uh, darkness of ignorance that is present in the world and then he looked at the world with his eyes with his wisdom and with his divine eyes that he got through practicing the mindfulness and meditation and noble eightfold path he saw whole world as like a lotus pond there are lot of buds which are above the ground which are matured enough to bloom when the sun rises there are some bloods they are also above the ground but they are not still uh, matured enough to uh, bloom even though sun is going to rise and there are some bloods where they are under water 
they're not going to bloom anyway even though sun rises and the but so there are some people who have very less defilement less defilement in their mind and they are matured enough to understand this four noble truths this reality and they are able to uh that they can develop their mind and but the so there are some people they are not their mind is not really their mind is completely obsessed by sense pleasure and this normal world and defilements they are not ready for it and there are some people they are really completely covered by ignorance and uh, defilements and they are underground they are under the water they're not going to understand this anyway so then buddha thought if i teach this dhamma the people who have less defilement will we are going to understand this and be free from suffering and be free from stress and depression and dissatisfaction of the world and discontentment from the, of the world and then he said now on this path of the path of freedom will be opened let your ears to listen to this and open your mind with confidence and listen to this fire chats mcdowell air force base is really close with rare it's one of the training okay listen and he said listen to this with confidence with open mind and practice this and since then he began to teach this dhamma what he was to, what he taught was the uh, noble truth he said in this world what is <clears throat> this we this world this life our life should be understood by the way life should be understood and the course of life should be understood and the cessation of this life should be understood should be achieved and the path there is a path leading towards the cessation of life cessation of the suffering and this dissatisfaction should be cultivated and understood 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 that path and cultivated that so he began to teach this noble truth that nobody was uh teaching and nobody knew and then when we think when we listen to his teachings for noble truths what we can see is the reality of life if we listen to the teachings and if we apply that teaching into ourselves as he explains we can see our life we can see it as it is but we have so much distractions our mind gets distracted so it's so hard to understand that reality quickly we don't know what type of you know but we are are we mature enough to understand this you know are we uh able to do this but in reality in in you know when we look at ourselves and when when we see our chance that we have right now is very rare so we have a chance to understand if we pay attention to it but it depends on the effort that we put into it but understand the phonable truth is is it doesn't happen overnight or right away if our mind is not ready for it so then we need to make our mind ready and suitable and malleable workable to see what we don't see to understand what we don't understand what we generally what this world with this world do is does is people what people do is 
they follow their mind whatever their mind says they follow that so following their mind following our mind doesn't lead to the cessation of suffering if it was possible we wouldn't be here today in being born in this world and having mental and physical suffering we wouldn't have any stress depression anxiety fear and uncertainty in our life but following our mind it leads to this that uncertainty and it leads to just to have a hope and it leads to the uh, stress fear depression anxiety we don't know what is going to happen and we don't know what happened and we don't know we are just walking around like blind people you know when blind people walk they don't know where they are where are they where they are walking to where they are walking and what is what is what is around him or she her they don't know in each in each step that a blind man makes has a danger has a risk so that's why a blind man needs a help from a person who has the eyesight so the buddha is the person who cured his eyes and got the eyesight and gave his hand to the people to beings who can follow this path to find their safe not to just you know not to just take them to somewhere and put them there being blind but both the thought was there is a way to cure your eyesight and see what is the reality and then you see the path and now you can step on on the right path you have no risk no danger you know where are you going but you need to heal your eyesight there's a way to do it in order to heal our that inner wisdom the eyesight to gain that inner wisdom eyesight you need to develop this noble qualities noble faithful path mindfulness meditation kindness compassion sympathetic joy equanimity and sharing your time with other people and giving your time giving your energy you know being you know that's called generosity you you give your time to others without being based on your own self you spread out yourself to this world you know what i mean and the way we spread out ourselves is being kind compassionate and opening of friendliness to beings and being generous and kind compassionate and training ourselves to live with the with um this world without being hurt and what our general mind does normal mind the un- the ordinary mind does what it does is it always collides with things which comes to its experiences it collapses with them or you know what i mean was like liking and disliking things attached getting attached to things or uh, or getting you know a version you know dislike begin to dislike my begins dislike to things 
and then when we have an environment which which we cannot be merged on very secondly and when we think about when we think about the uh, the environment that we are in and if it is kind of an environment which we feel uncomfortable it is because of our mindset that we have set set up in regarding the environment and not pract- not training our mind to be merged on to it and then we if we are not able to merge our minds with our thinking patterns you know on to it not following any unwholesome mistakes what i mean was seeing the main source of the stress that we gain from the present contact of our senses seeing that seeing the present awareness seeing the present moment and seeing the cause of the stress which creates that and removing the uh, resentment that we have in our mind regarding the present moment be developing patience in the moment and developing kindness in the moment we can create we can um, gain peace within itself instead of resentment and attachment it come from within ourselves within the mindfulness training and practicing meditation practicing within the we un- our understanding about the present moment not pushing things or not from pushing things away or not from getting attached to things so what our mind does is it always says oh this might be good they can try it might make me happy so then get attached to it and follow that <coughs> oh Oh what it does is oh this is not good for me I don't like this and get it get a version to it I cannot have it I don't I cannot go with this always we put i there you know i am or i there and we measure it oh, I don't like this and I like this and then our mind tends towards whatever it be it feels comfortable but we ca- are not able to maintain a mind which is always comfortable with any kind of experiences that we experience in the moment why we can't experience why we can have that kind of mind it is because of that ordinary nature of our own mind and we cannot see the path of peace which we can gain right now which we can follow right now in this moment we cannot see it because we are blind we are blind by the attachments and aversion either by aversion or attachment we we get blind by this too and they create uncomfortable situation in our mind and then we get stress and then we don't know what to do what should i do what kind of decisions should i make we don't understand that we cannot get that clear because we are not comfortable in the moment do you know what i mean so 
the reason you know in in buddhist meditation in this path in buddhist teachings so what we are trying to do what is the purpose of practicing buddhist teaching is to understand the moment of now and and to understand the life as it is and and to and also to understand the mind as it is and set ourselves free from that un, you know that ordinary nature of being attached to things and being you know having resentment or aversion towards things you know what i mean yeah we are just moving towards to the towards these two sides always like we are shaking like you know jump <coughs> onto this or to to this each sides and we have no peace we have we always shaken by these two situations that come to that comes to our awareness in the moment we cannot have a very peaceful balanced mind well st- very well steady well established mind because of the ignorance that we have because of the lack of understanding of life that we have we don't have a better way a spiritual way to understand who we are we get driven by our mind feelings our 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 intention which arises in our mind based on the environment whatever that comes to you in the in, in a situation that those experiences and the intention that you have the decision that you have made or that you have in the moment it is conditional and it is based on the environment mental environment or physical environment or things that you saw or heard that you see or hear that you experience with your senses and the tendency of your consciousness we are your consciousness always tend to words you know the the tendency of tendency of consciousness is based on craving what do i desire for whatever that we have desire towards something that is where the consciousness tends to so that is where that is you know about what you are mostly thinking of and dreaming of because your consciousness tends towards that that's that is something that we don't see because we think that i am thinking you know why in some people think why i am having this kind of thoughts constant in my mind because there is the craving inside of us in our mind that your mind tends towards those things and almost uh, always try to worry about things and always like to think keep thinking of it but in in this path in buddhist teachings we learn buddhist teachings to understand this mental phenomena and the uh the reality of this life and to set ourselves free from craving fetters and attachments and bondages so we don't follow our attachments we follow dhamma dhamma means reality so we learn dhamma to understand that and when we gain confidence in the dhamma then we follow dhamma otherwise it's so hard to follow the dhamma it's so hard to train ourselves in that because we don't get it we don't understand it because our consciousness doesn't tend tend towards that it cannot continue because it's not pleased by it why we why that mind doesn't get pleased by it is because of the the opacity of defilements is very high 
when the opacity of ignorance is really high and opacity of hindrances or distractions are very high we cannot see through we don't see through we only see whatever it reflects back it doesn't go through it reflects back to us projecting me or i am in ourselves it reflects back <coughs> so whatever we see the reflection that we gain is me mine or this is mine so we get stuck in that in that reflection we don't gain the right perception right intention about the moment about the situation because of that thick opacity of ignorance so in order to train our mind to be free from that ignorance we practice meditation we practice noble eightfold path and we learn because in buddhist teaching we talk about lots of deep points of our life we talk about our body we talk about our mind we talk about feeling we talk about intentions we talk about perception we talk about consciousness we talk about the way consciousness comes to be we talk about the nature of consciousness we talk about the cessation of consciousness we talk about the path of consciousness we talk about the path of intentions we talk about the nature of intentions we talk about the six senses we talk about the external objects that we experience we talk about elements main elements we talk about the you know outside forces we talk about the internal force we talk about the universe there are a lot of things that we talk about in buddhist teachings and we train our mind to see them as they really are in order to get rid of ignorance that we have because our mind our consciousness it inclines to grab anything it inclines towards things things that we have experienced and things that we have no have not experienced yet our mind is always looking for things something it's always looking for things You know what I mean? Our consciousness always, you know, it wants to be busy. It wants to be busy. It wants to have something. It will like it. Something that it has uh, been tend to. It's always looking for that. So then we have to put a really good effort. to develop our mind in order to develop our mind we need to follow a path which leads towards this passion detachment concentration peace wisdom generosity kindness compassion so then we develop completely opposite things of our ordinary mind wants to have it tries to ordinary mind tries to engage in all the pleasures that we have that in that is present in the world and it becomes immoral so we practice morality morality is a great way to train ourselves to be detached from ordinary thing we develop morality morality creates kindness compassion sympathetic joy and equanimity to some extent and it helps us to concentrate our mind now it leads to concentration now when we meditate when we practice mindfulness and when we practice morality we gain the ability of concentration the, the more we practice it the more concentration that we gain and when we gain the good concentration towards the you know towards the reality and then 
concentration helps us to lead our mind towards wisdom to see the reality as it is and then we can see the reality and we in order to gain the reality we need to use that concentrated mind the according to the right way which shows us the wisdom which shows us the reality and then we lead our mind towards that so then we can see with that we can what we can see with the concentrated mind is we can see impermanence of all the forces that we have all the energy that we have all imp- all the thoughts that we have everything that we experience we can see them as impermanent as they really are and how conditional they are and we no more we don't follow our intuition so our uh, feelings whatever intuition or feeling pop up in our mind we put them into dhamma and then we see what what is what is powered what is giving energy to this kind of thoughts ego or greed or anger or delusion or hatred ill will passion what is this is there det- any at any anger any any aversion that i have towards something we think wisely and we see oh this kind of feelings and thoughts are now which i have right now are powered by thoughts of anger i'm be i'm you know anger anger is growing in me towards this particular things this things towards this person towards the environment that i am in that's why this is happening in me now that's why the decision came to me now we don't grab that decision as me and we think about the decision where did it come from and then we see the main resources of that decision and then we see this decision came from unwholesome states of my mind and sometimes we understand later that after we after we did it oh i did this with anger mind with, with an angry mind or with a deluded mind or with a greedy mind or with a jealousy mind sometimes we understand it later and then we need to raise an awareness regarding that object we need to be aware of it and we need to learn a lesson out of it we need to give a message to our mind saying that i no longer let this to get me again i need to raise the awareness of mind you know awareness of reality against this kind of actions because these actions hurts me and hurt others so we understand we that's how we really train our mind in our day to day activities in daily life without getting stressed out of anything and we need to have very deep understanding about the about our mind and thoughts whatever we feel in our mind because the feeling that you have in you is not based on your decision it is based on conditions which is around it it is not something that we we or a person is creating in you it is conditioned by things that you are surrounded by but we don't see that reality and we follow that mind and we either we lose the path of freedom or we walk away or we get delayed we don't we get stuck on the way we need to understand we need to think about the value of understanding our life the value of understanding of this moment you know we have a big you know if you think about this we have a big mystery behind our life where did i come from what is happening what is this world and what is you know what is going on in this world what is going to happen 
all those things there's only one way that we can understand is to develop our mind and set our minds up free from hindrances and defilements that's the only way that we can understand this life the reality of our life because as long as hindrances are present disturbances or barriers are present the distractions are present in our mind we cannot continue our men our our spiritual path we cannot remove the main sources of stress or depression and anxiety and fear from our mind they keep coming back to our mind wherever we go because we walk with our defilements and attachment not we are not leaving them instead of leaving the defilement we leave something else and we, and we still we have the problem going around you know what i mean that's why we develop this mind and that's why we learn buddhist teachings you know we need to study buddhist teaching in detail what would the thought you know he wasn't a normal ordinary person who appeared to this world and he was free from anger greed delusion and hatred when we when we read his suttas read, read his talks read his teachings we can see is oh, he's always talking about letting go of defilements training our mind to uh, drop defilements and unhold some states of our mind and dropping our ego and developing our mind and understanding the true nature of our life why is he talking about that why he always thought something like that which is very unique and rare in the world so we should be you know should be able to pay attention to that and learn that and learn the value of detachment and the danger of attachment attachment create fear uncertainty anger greed ill will passion hatred so we are attached to ourselves we are attached to our feelings so we know to see the reality of the feelings that we have in order to find the mystery of feelings which we have we train our mind through meditation and mindfulness and we develop mindfulness and we learn buddhist teachings in order to find that mystery because buddhist teaching is all about developing our mind through the eight factors eight faults eight steps of the nature developing our eyesight when we have the eyesight we have no risk our decisions are crystal clear those decisions are not based on attachment those decisions are based on detachment those decisions and our thoughts intentions and our actions are all based on the dhamma not based on the defilements is you know then we don't have troubles coming from the world coming coming through ourselves or we are able to stay, stay at calm and peace in any kind of situations at any place in any way very strong mind am i being clear you know the f- following the noble eightfold path and what i- and what we are looking for through this path is peace not just momentary peace or pleasure complete freedom from our delusion we don't know who we are and you know even you didn't make your body as you want you didn't make you didn't create your thoughts as you want they all are conditional we need to see that reality so <clears throat> we develop morality concentration and wisdom and we should not we should never give up that practicing 
morality practicing concentration practicing wisdom developing wisdom through that way that that path we are able to reach we are able to understand things that we don't understand see things that we don't see in the world and then gain a very straightforward way and life no stress no depression very clear very crystal clear the path the future is clear, very crystal clear you have no fear of worrying about future because your future is crystal clear for you only few people have that crystal clear future in the world others future they don't know what is going to happen they are very the people are worrying about that but through this path we can have very crystal clear life we know what, what is life we know what is going to happen and we know what is our destination we know what we are going to experience there and no problem so then we we won't have a question i don't know we do we, we our future is uncertain but internally in the future you have no worry no troubles because your future is very crystal clear you have a destination where are you going you have no worry no fear regarding that when we practice this path that's why we develop and learn we develop this mind and learn buddhist teachings that's why we should learn you know this deep reality of our life we should learn about impermanence we should learn about mind we should learn about uh, the concentration levels we should get into it and practice it develop it and learn and develop our mind and always should be mindful uh, of wholesome states and unwholesome states and train our mind to let go of unwholesome states so i bless you may all of you be able to understand the benefit purpose of buddhist teachings and practice in meditation and mindfulness and train your mind to gain that inner freedom and liberation as soon as possible sadhu sadhu sadhu